Okay, there's no time for fancy intros, we're going straight in. It's Warhammer Open Day, we've got the reveals. The first one we're going to take a look at is Commander Farsight, because I've been looking forward to this. This was teased at the start of the year in those kind of silhouette pictures they did, those little teasers, and I've been looking forward to seeing this ever since then. This feels like quite a big step up from the old one, like quite big. There's a lot going on that's different here. We can take a look at the old one right now. It's still on the Games Workshop site, so take a look whilst you can, because it's not going to be there for very long. Farsight already had a few notable differences from the Tau Empire Commander. I mean, this is the newer version of that since it's the 2017 one, but still, there are already some differences, right? There were already some significant changes, and it really helped set him apart. I would suggest that this is a step above that, like, by quite a bit. This is like a lot sleeker. This suit is way sleeker than the standard one. The standard one, you've still got that very boxy chest. There are some like some curves to it, and you do have like segmented panels on the legs, but they're quite thick, quite chunky. They also don't have that uh, really cool like shoulder pauldron. Shoulder pauldron? Pauldrons go on the shoulders. I don't know why I said it the way I did, but there you go. But there's a big difference on this far sight between like the legs and the legs on this, between the torso as well. Like, the torso on far side now has got these kind of bars coming out the side that then attach to the shoulders by the look of things. I like the changes they've made. Like, I like them a lot. This looks, like, sleeker and faster. It looks more developed, slightly less armoured in some ways, and they've moved kind of, like, some of the segmented sections around, so the legs are a lot simpler in terms of, like, how many parts they, they are, but... They're also a very different shape as well. Like, switching between these two, it it really does feel very, very different. Far more so than the old Farsight did. Now, that is, that is significant in its difference. I like it a lot. I will say, I think if you weren't a fan of the Tau aesthetic before and kind of... I mean, let's be honest, they're not exactly hiding where they've got inspiration from for these... If you weren't already a fan of that, then I'd suggest that there's a good chance this is not going to be an improvement. Because if anything, they've taken the, the, the current theme and turned it up, I'd suggest. I mean, the base is very on the nose. The base is very on the nose. But overall, I, I, like, I like this new version of Farsight. I like it a lot. I think the head looks better. I really like that the jetpack, the wings on the side, like kind of those adjustment wings that look really, really nice. They haven't changed the design of the sword too much, which is a good thing. Like that close-up of the head in the bottom right, that that looks great. You can just see I mean it's also the way it's painted. Like the fact they've put a bit of just that bit of OSL on the bottom of the uh on the bottom of where the lens is, that oh it works so good. There's little things as well, like if you look at the uh, if you look at like the the vents at the top, they are curved. Like the housing is curved on there. There's a lot more in the way of kind of rounded edges going on on Farsight's suit now. That is a great looking model. That is really really nice. Now I don't think there was anything necessarily wrong with the old one. I don't think there was anything that like stuck out as being bad or rubbish or anything. But it's definitely getting on a bit, and I do like the steps they've taken to kind of push him even further away. So there is of course a reason for him having a slightly more fancy suit because it's a bleeding edge XV86 supernova battle suit. <laughs> so it's so cheesy. I love it, but it's really cheesy. Designed specifically to suit his needs by Ovesa, the Earthcast scientist who fights by his side as one of the eight. I do like how it says although similar to the XV8 crisis suit. It is similar in that they're both suits. A lot of it looks really considerably different in my opinion. Now he will of course be getting his own Arcs of Omen book. He's also going to be in a new boarding patrol which is super interesting. I mean are we going to get a non-farsight version of a Tau boarding patrol or is this just what you get for this? It seems unlikely that they would suddenly decide hey we're going to we're going to make it so that you can build farsight as just a regular commander. I mean I don't see him being like a dual purpose kit because surely part of the big deal with him is that he has this fancy armor that, that I'm assuming you can't just take as a normal Tau commander. I could be wrong. Either way, this is a fancy lad. This is a fancy lad, and I'm liking him a lot. Good update, this one. Good update. Next up, we have new boss Snickrot. Snickrot is one of the best models that Games Workshop has ever made, and I will stand by that forever. This is his old version, and it is quality. 
It's grim, it's dark, it's grimy. He looks like an absolute deranged murderer, which is fantastic. Two gigantic combat knives. All the dog tags wrapped around the, the, uh, the forearms there, which you'd assume would make him bad at stealth, but no, he isn't. The old model is brilliant. I love it. And I think the new one is pretty decent too. I have to admit, I'm not quite as enthusiastic about this one as I am about Farsight. I mean, it is a good update. It's definitely a good update. But there is something that this model doesn't have that the old one did. And it's a certain, like, it's a certain personality. See, I mean, technically, this is a better model. Like, the details are crisper. You've got, like... I feel like the posing is a little bit better. You've got multiple choices in terms of what you want to do for the head. So you can either have mask up, mask off, or mask down. So there's there's more choice going on there. And overall, the details are pretty much the same. You've still got all those dog tags around the forearms. You've got, like, the combat blades are pretty much exactly the same. Um, they're just more detailed, and they are a bit thinner and a bit... They're just a bit better looking. Overall, this is just a much more crisp miniature. The thing is, a big part of what made the other one so good was was the pose. See, this one, the pose is good, except it's missing one little detail, which is the finger in front of the mouth. See that little shh motion? That, that's, that's significant. Like, that adds so much to the model in terms of personality. That, like, that makes it partially as creepy as it is. An orc that looks like that, having the intelligence to tell someone to be quiet so that he can go around murdering in silence, that is a big deal, and we don't have that with the new one. We don't have it. He's got more of an action pose, like he's more ready to, well, go and shank someone, obviously, but just that lack of that one little detail, I think genuinely takes away from what is otherwise a really good model. I do like the mask. I, I don't know which I prefer, to be honest. I mean, I like both of them. I like both of them. I'm used to the old one, but the new one is pretty good as well. It would help a lot for me, personally, just like with visualising stuff, if I could see the full model with the mask down, because I, I'm really struggling to, like, transplant the head of one onto the body of the other. I mean, I could do a quick Photoshop of it. That would work. But, yeah, I, I, I think... I think the mask I still like a lot. I still the mask is still good. It's not changed a huge amount and it still looks a bit freaky. I'll be very tempted to just take away the green and the red and just do the whole thing blue though. I think just the whole thing being blue lenses would make it look better for me personally. Overall though, this is a solid lad. Once again, a nice update. It's just just missing that that little bit of attitude. You just it's amazing what like one bit of pose can do to a model like how much it can alter the way it looks and the attitude it gives off. That is literally my only complaint, though. Snickerot is also a bound on the Arcs of Omen, so he is also in a boarding patrol. I mean, I'm not surprised, to be honest. This is one of those things where, of course, what they've done is they've got the new HQ, they've got the new fancy special model for these two factions, and then it goes in a box for a while before you can get it separately, because that way, if you really, really want it, you've got to buy the box and that'll cost you more money. I still don't like it as a tactic. It sucks, but GW gonna GW. Now for AOS, we have <laughs> we have some some interesting opposites. So we have a Slanesh champion and a Corn champion. The Slanesh one is the Lord of Hubris, who basically just saunters over to enemy combatants who are highly skilled and looks at them as though they're nothing until they attack him. At which point he kills them. So very on brand, very Lucius the Eternal there. They've definitely nailed the arrogant, come-and-get-it sort of pose, which which I like. He is a champion of Slanesh, so of course wardrobe choices are questionable. Questionable, to say the least. For some reason, he really wants long hair, but instead of growing his own, he's got some sort of weird helmet on with a bunch of tassels hanging down the back. Look, it's your head. You do what you like with it, I guess. I do really like this, to be honest. But then again, I like a lot of the Head and Ice of Sinesh stuff. Like, they they have such a cool, unique style. They're so distinctly Chaos, but they don't look like any of the other Chaos stuff. I think, in some cases, some of the, some of the like, the, the Bloodbound of Corn and just, you know, the generic Chaos Warriors and stuff, from a distance, they can be a little similar, a little samey. Not, like, identical, but not, like, a single glance. You know exactly what it is. I feel like the Head Knights of Sinesh, they have such a 
such a different feel to a lot of the other Chaos stuff that they are instantly recognisable from quite a way away, and I like that about them. This guy is just no different. I really like his shield. It's super fancy, probably not all that functional with all that kind of weird engraving and embossing and stuff, and surely blades will get like caught on it or deflect in weird angles and situations, but whatever, it looks cool. Also really like the face on the shoulder pad. That's really nicely done. Actually relatively subtle, I think. The tassel helmet is mad. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Why would you? But, again, I mean, it's Slanesh. So, I mean, what do you expect, really? It's all about excess and showing off. And, I mean, if you can fight with that hanging off the back of your skull, then clearly you've got the skills to pay the bills. Now, there's also going to be a vanguard for Head and Knights of Slanesh, which I'm actually quite excited about. I'm looking forward to getting this because I want it. But this is being released alongside the new Battle Tome. Now, the art on the front of this Battle Tome, it, it just... It makes me sad. I don't know what they've done to this or why. Because this is not good. The lighting is totally off of the Keeper of Secrets. The Keeper of Secrets, for some reason, is heavily lit from the front, while the everything around it is in shadow at the front. So why is that super bright when everything around it isn't? The light sources don't make any sense for where the light is falling on the Keeper of Secrets, no matter where you look at it. The, because it's lit so badly... And because it's so light compared to everything else, it means that there's no depth to it at all. It looks like the sky is, like, just pressed up against the back of it. It's just really flat and lifeless, and it it just doesn't look good. And I don't really know why they've done what they've done with it. Because this isn't what it looked like originally. Like, this is art that they've had edited or painted over or something. Now, the original one looked like this. Which is maybe too dark for the front of a battle tome, right? It may be too dull for that. But in that case, just do different art. Don't take this, which is actually pretty decent, and yeah, I, I just... Oh, why did they do it? Just super underwhelming battle tome cover that. Super underwhelming. The lad himself, I do like. It's just, <laughs> why'd you have to go and spoil it by making me scroll down? Why? Finally, we have the Realm Gore Ritualist, which is an insane name for anything. Absolutely ludicrous. Realm Gore. I suppose, to be honest, at least you don't need to really read into what they do, because it's fairly... I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, isn't it? Realm Gore Ritualist. It's all about that blood sacrifice, isn't it? I mean, what else could it possibly be? I do quite like this one. I mean, they, they do have uh, they do have a rock. They are standing on it. But it is technically a ritual altar. So I suppose we can we can let them off. I do quite like this model. It's it's nice. I, admittedly, I'm a bit, like, burnt out on the, the bloodbound of... Is it bloodbound? No, it's Blades of Corn, isn't it? What am I talking about? I, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit burnt out on those at this stage. Then again, faction fatigue is 100% a thing. And Blades of Corn were in the first edition of AOS along with Stormcast Eternals. Like, they were the other half of the box... And they've not had, like, a bajillion releases since then, but they've definitely been around a while at this stage. And I think because I have that half of that box, I've just kind of got a bit bored of them over the years. I can still, like, appreciate them from a distance, but I don't really have any desire to go down that path again, if you know what I mean. The Blades of Corn Battle Tome is on the way as well, with art that doesn't look terrible, so that's nice. Like, that's the way to compare it. Look at this. Look at this Battle Tome cover. And then look at that, and tell me which one looks better. Because I, I refuse to believe you if you think it's this one. The amount of detail, the correct lighting, the depth, all of that stuff. The fact that it looks like it's not on like a flat plane. The fact that the perspective is right, and they don't look warped and flat. Like, come on. <laughs> what? Oh. Anyway, good looking cover. And there is going to be a vanguard for Blades of Corn, which, yeah. I mean, the Slaughter Priest model is still... It's still quality. I have the Slaughter Priest. The Slaughter Priest is fantastic. I'll always love that model. Just overall as a faction, I think I'm a bit over it. But that's okay, because if you're not over it and you're loving it, then this is good news for you. Ignore me. I mean, you should always ignore me, but ignore me. We're going to go back to Farsight. We're going to go back to Farsight because I like Farsight a lot. Love him. He's taken my mind off the terrible Battle Tome cover, so <laughs> it helps. And I think of the four that we've seen, this is the thing that's tickled my fancy the most. This is the one that I'm most excited about. The question is, which one is it for you? Which of these four 
are you most enjoying? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, button. so click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, and there's some pre-orders right now as well. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. <laughs>